Welcome to a little bit of lab fun, networking with fish style. What we're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna join me in the world of the proof of concept, labbing things up. And we're gonna to talk today specifically about the WAN bridge. The WAN bridge is a tool that is free and out there on the internet. And you can cause impairment, you can cause delay and loss. And it's very simple and very easy and I use it a great deal. And I use it a great deal right now because I'm also doing a lot of software defined wide area networking. And so for that, of course, I want to do some type of brownout so I can do brownout avoidance. For example, if string was sending traffic up the MPLS path and I had delay or loss, I'd like to go ahead and move over to the internet path if that was a healthier path. Of course, that means I'd be doing checking out to make sure it's a healthier path. path. But that's IWAN. That's intelligent wide area networking. That's not what we're talking about today. So what I want is I want one, two, three, four, five, six impairment points in my network. I want to go ahead and impair. Now what you used to do years ago was WAMBridge actually was out on the internet and you could get it as an ISO and you download it, you put it into something, put a nick here and a nick here and be a bump in the wire. Nowadays I use a VM and I use a UCS. For very, for past year, every time I wanted one WAN impairment point, I would go ahead and use a VM and I would also use two NICs. I would use a NIC over on this side and a NIC over on this side. I have a C-series and I got four NICs on the back and that means two WAN bridges for four NICs. That's got to be unacceptable. So really would like to go ahead and figure out a different way of doing it and there is. So what we can do is again we want a WAN bridge here, 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 and here. So in the past, like I said, I would actually do one WAN bridge and one NIC per, either in a device with an ISO in it or in a VM. What I'd like to be able to do is consolidate that down into one trunk port on a switch and have that one trunk port to the UCS on that switch actually trunk up all of the VLANs that I need to the UCS and to the six WAN bridge VMs to each individual WAN bridge VM. So that's gonna look like this. So I'm gonna take a switch and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use one physical connection off of that switch and one physical connection off of my UCS. And I'm gonna trunk that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five, six WAN bridge VMs that are gonna bridge between. So what will happen, for example, is I will make a WAM bridge between aerosol and Gouda. It will actually have, it'll be a VM with two virtual NICs in it. One of the virtual NICs will be in VLAN 41. The other virtual NIC will be in VLAN 641. What that means is the traffic will come in from aerosol the only other device on this switch that has anything to do with VLAN 41 will be the trunk interface up to the UCS. I will be permitting VLAN 41. In fact, I will be permitting all 12 of these VLANs up to the UCS. It will go up there into one virtual NIC on the WAN bridge that is between aerosol and Gouda. And then because we set the NIC to be in what's called promiscuous mode, a key thing for the WAM bridge, it will go out the other virtual NIC and then back down here on VLAN 641. If you don't enable delay or loss, you're just a bump in the wire. You can also do things like reduce the speed, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. But the two things with this that I found was Number one, first and foremost, on the switch, you absolutely, positively must disable spanning tree for all 12 of these VLANs. Why? Because VLAN 41, if you allow 
expanding tree to be on, VLAN 41 will go ahead and create a BPDU. It will go up this trunk. It will go through the WAM bridge, come out the other side to VLAN 641. There's something very small in the PBS, PBST, the per VLAN spanning tree, at the end that will actually say, I'm in this VLAN. And when 641 sees the VLAN from, from 41 as a double check, it'll say, ooh, wrong VLAN. And it'll go into blocking state. And then your WAM bridge won't work. So the two key things are, number one, disable spanning tree in this switch. This is a dedicated switch just to create and make life simple so that I can go ahead and use one uh, UCS with one NIC and I can have six WAM bridges up there. So again, on my trunk up here, I'm allowing all six of these. And between each one of these, I have a WAM bridge that has a virtual NIC in 13, another virtual NIC in 613. For another WAM bridge instance, that's virtual NIC is in 14, another virtual NIC is in 614. Two key things, again, disable spanning tree here, trunk here, and there is one other additional thing. What you need to do is you need to change the default behavior of your NIC in the UCS to reject promiscuous, from reject promiscuous mode, <coughs> reject promiscuous to accept promiscuous. Let me show you. If we come into here, if we come here, this is my V switch that has all six of the WAM bridges on here. The WAM bridge between mozzarella and cheddar, the WAM bridge between fish and Colby, the WAM bridge between ricotta and cheddar, uh, and so on and so on. These are all connected to one physical NIC on here. If we actually look at this, this is connected to a device called Edom on gigabit 1047. It's a 3750G, so that's 1047. So let's go ahead and go over there and look. Show run interface gigabit 1047. You can see I have all 12 of the VLANs on here. If we do a show interface trunk, and if we actually do a show spanning tree, We'll see that I do have other VLANs on here, but if we do a show spanning tree, <clears throat> VLAN 13, there's nothing for that. 613, there's nothing for that. So all 12 of the ones that I'm using from a WAM bridge perspective do not have spanning tree enabled. So no spanning tree for any of these 12. Next thing, if we go ahead and do a show VLAN, you'll see 13, 613. 14, 614. Okay, do a show CDP neighbor. You'll see that I also have other devices on here as well, but these are all of my different devices. I toss them together and then I go ahead and come back over to here. So I told you one big thing is no spanning tree on the switch. The other big thing, but this is a Wambridge big thing. This is not a how do you do it with the trunking big thing. And that is that in order for WAM bridge to work, you absolutely positively must come into the NIC, into the vSwitch, and change the security from reject promiscuous mode to accept promiscuous mode. And it must be that case for everything. You must accept promiscuous mode so that the traffic can come in and go back out and the WAM bridge can be a bump in the wire. So let's go ahead and go to string and have a little bit of fun with this. So if we come here, we actually have 631 to 31, that's string. If we actually go back, this is string. This is feta right here. So this is the WAM bridge we're about to do. So let's go ahead and go over to string and let's up arrow and look at that timeout. That is string connecting up to there. And let's go ahead and cause a little bit of impairment. So let's go ahead and go over to string to feta. And we'll do a custom. And, and I will go ahead and do that much delay and no loss. And let's go ahead and come back over to string. And there's your impairment. 
It's actually doing it in both directions, so of course the result of a ping is the ICMP echo and the ICMP echo request. I mean, sorry, the request and the ICMP echo reply. So we're actually seeing two times that. So again, that's all there is. I adore Wambridge. What's another reason for using Wambridge? If I have a physical connection between string and feta and the customer wants to go ahead and shut down that link, if I physically pull out this cable right here, then string will actually see a link one down detection. I don't want either side to do a link one down detection. What I want to do is pretend that something happened in the middle. So what I'll do is I'll go to the WAM bridge and I'll cause 100% loss. So it is absolutely fantastic so that I don't have to actually do a link one uh, down detection, have something trigger too much of a fast response, or I don't have to do a shutdown. So where do you get WAMBridge? You go ahead and you get it anywhere out on the internet. A very simple way of getting it is out on Cisco. Again, this is completely free. And as you can see, pretty darn like out there for a while. So anyway, that's it. Hope you had fun in the lab doing networking with Fishstyle. Have a great day.